Hello and welcome guys. In this project, I am going to make a deep learning model which will identify the type of flower by looking just the flower image and it will identify the that which type of flower it is, whether it is a rose, whether it is sunflower, whether it is daisy, whether like that. We have to identify it. I have taken this uh, the data set from Kaggle, provide this link in description. So this is uh, my data set. So this is a data set contain level of fourth or uh, level as uh, 4,242 images of flower. This uh, 228 MB data set. So you can download this data set from here. After downloading this data set, it look like this. Uh, this is if I unzip this and you will get this this flower folder you will get so let's open this so when you open this you will get this daisy dandelion and flowers rose sunflower tulip this type of folder you will get so let's open you see here this is the image of each flower type so this is the image of daisy flower and this is the image of dandelion and this is the image of uh, rose, this sunflower image, and this is tulip. So these are the flowers. So before getting started, we have to split this data set into training set and test set. Okay. And be, uh, because why I am doing this, I will tell you because uh, at the time of data pre processing, I am just going to provide this directory and tensorflow and keras library of python will do everything so our task is now to split this data set into training set and test set we have to make a separate folder for this okay better is to make a uh, just like this i have uh, created here so make a separate folder like this flower recognition okay and in in this flower recognition folder you have to make two more folder training set and test set so make these two folder training set and test set okay and what you have to do you have to you have to copy this all images you have to copy this all images so just copy this all images and paste here paste in training set okay copy this all images and paste in training set okay so paste i have already pasted here okay after pasting this after pasting in training set makes same make this same folder here also in test set also make same folder which you have uh, done in training set make same folder in test set also okay and next what you have to do go to training set and uh, go to this daisy folder and cut approx 20 percent you have to perform approx 20 percent take 20 percent images from here and cut it and paste it here okay paste here approx 20 percent take or uh, 15 to 20 percent you have to take okay repeat this process uh, same for all other folder okay so what we have, uh, we have to do from this original folder we have to copy some uh, approx uh, 15 to 20 percent of images uh, from here to here okay so basically uh, we have to split manually the into training set and test set first of all what you have to do download that uh, data set and take that images and put it in the training set okay put it in the training set and same folder you have to create in test set also why i am doing this because at the time of data pre-processing i am going to uh, provide training set folder and test set folder it will do everything and uh, at the time of uh, building convolution neural network Convolution Neural Network will identify and categorize all these images with separate folder with name this. Okay. 
so at the time of image recognition of anything whether it is cat or dog whether it is male female man woman anything your folder contain the same name which you have to identify like this folder contain the images of daisy daisy flower so your folder contain the same name because on the basis of this folder name because at the time of uh, when convolution neural network will at the time of training the convolution neural network it will go to this folder first of all it will go to daisy and take all its images and put some relation on this and then it goes on dandelion and see the uh, see these images and uh, on the basis of some features it will identify some relation and it will take categorize it as a dandelion and same for rows okay so our folder name is the category which in on the basis of which i am going to uh, i am going to categorize all these flowers name okay so that's why it's important to give a valid folder name because uh, on, um, because our deep learning model will identify image on the basis of this folder name okay and it will also predict the output the same name in which category your image belongs okay so that's why folder name is very important so all this folder put it in training set and also in test set because same we have to train okay but make sure that images are different because if we are if you are going to take the same images from training set and put it in the test set then your model will definitely predict a bad result you will get a good accuracy at the time of training but you will not get a good accuracy at the time of testing and it's the case of overfitting so that's why to avoid overfitting you have to do this so if you are beginners and you don't know what is convolution neural network what is artificial neural network and what is deep learning then uh, i will tell you what is this so now uh, i will show you what is convolution neural network because in this project i am going to use convolution neural network so it's important to show you guys that what is convolution neural network okay so let's go to this link so from here i am going to show you what is convolution neural network so convolution neural network is basically it's a part of deep learning with the help of which we can solve this type of problems related to images okay uh, basically uh, all computer vision problems all um, problems related to images and uh, uh, time series analysis uh, can also be solved with this so you can solve with this convolution neural network okay uh, like um, in the term of machine learning you can tell that uh, if you are going to deal with classification and regression problems then you can use and if your data set is very long then you can use artificial neural network okay and if you are going to deal with images image related problem like image recognition object recognition or face recognition these type of problems and you are going to make such type of models so you can go through convolution neural network okay so convolution neural network play important role in in this field in computer vision type of field okay so what you have to do so convolution neural network basically take input image okay it take input image and using some layers using some uh, layers like uh, uh, convolution pooling and full fully connected layers all these layer are responsible to convert this image to extract the important feature of that from that image and put it in the uh, artificial neural net okay artificial neural net if you are uh, if you don't know artificial neural network then also no problem because later i am going to explain what is our, how artificial neural network work so now let's see this image okay so here what is going on here so convolution neural network basically what do it it extract the important part of that image okay and put it in the using the process called convolution okay it 
it extract the important part of that image and uh, like this uh, you you see here there is more than one layer one two three four four five layer it extract in four five layers okay and then filter it using pooling process and after pooling it perform flattening and convert it like this okay so what is convolution layer i'm going to tell you here so convolution layer basically our uh, image is divided in pixel okay in the form of if you are going to uh, in computer language you can say that if there is any image then computer will treat in the form of zero or one okay computer will treat each pixel in the form of zero or one so convolution layer will do it take a it take one feature map okay this is this is a feature map it take a small feature map and it will scan it will scan each pixel and put it in the separate matrix like this okay so our image is basically in the form of uh, matrix so this feature map will help to resize the image and only take the important feature of that image okay so basically this uh, feature map is removing all unwanted features from that image and taking only important feature in a separate matrix okay so this is a part of uh, this is a part of data pre-processing you can say that before going to convolution layer you have to put take a important feature of that image then only you can perform training okay so that's why this feature map will help to take this uh, important feature of that image and put it in the separate matrix okay so this is the first step involving convolution layer and what is second step in second step this is a pooling the pooling is down sampling operation typically applied after convolution layer after convolution layer we will apply pooling in which also uh, there is many type of pooling like max pooling and average pooling in max pooling what it, will it do uh, suppose we are going to take here 2 cross 2 matrix so here 2 cross 2 it will take and in 2 cross 2 in that it will take that element which is the maximum one and put it in the first column here okay in first element and then uh, same for uh, another another two cross two matrix and and so on okay so like this it will fill this okay it will take the maximum one okay and in max pool and in average pooling it will take the average of this two cross two matrix and put it put it in separate matrix okay so this is the pooling and what is this fully connected fully connected is basically artificial neural network uh, how it's going on here so uh, after pulling you will got this this is a three cross three matrix so this is a three cross three matrix and uh, you uh, and then there is one more process called flattening which will help to uh, um, convert this three cross three matrix in three cross in uh, in this form in single matrix which uh, having a column one okay so basically three cross three has element nine so it is a nine cross one matrix okay so it will flatten that matrix in a m cross one form okay so this will act as a neuron of the artificial neural network what is artificial neural network artificial neural network is a type of uh, network in which there is three layer one is input layer second is hidden layer this is hidden layer and the other one is the right one is output layer okay so what artificial neural network will do it will um, the the features of artificial neural network from input layer goes in hidden layer and there it performs some computation and hidden layer using some activation function it will perform um, it will train the data set by taking some relation and and there is many more process involved like um, at the time of training it will uh, identify some pattern and then 
um, there is back propagation and it compare with output values and if the values not matches and if the accuracy if the error is more then it will again goes and weight is adjusted and then your values uh, the parameters some parameters are also there so they are changing and some parameters some weight is adjusted and they are going to match some pattern and then it will predict some good result so these all are uh, steps happening in at the time of training so basically what you have to do here so after performing convolution um, layer and pooling then flattening then then put it in the convolution uh, put it in the artificial neural network okay so this is all are the part of image processing and after this uh, you have to repeat the artificial neural network and put it in the artificial neural network by just flattening it and um, go and then it goes in hidden layer and there it performs some computation and then it finds some relation and compare the result with the output result then it uh, then the most close value it will take and like this it is going to train our model and then it's ready for doing prediction okay so these all are uh, some basics of convolution neural network and one more thing here strides so you will see when i'm going to build an artificial neural network using tensorflow you will see this stride word because there also i'm going to pass a stride parameter stride is what stride is no nothing stride is just like this if there is stride if stride is one if stride is two then it will move two step okay like this here here stride is two so it's moving from here two step and then here no matrix so after that it's going here okay two step and then two step below okay like this it's moving so stride is basically a move how many uh, steps it will take our feature map will take okay so this is a stride okay so these all are the basics related to convolution neural network so i think now we are ready to go for code okay these all are the basics uh, but uh, at the time of coding you will see that you have to do nothing all every computation everything is going to be done by using tensorflow and keras which is a very powerful library but it's important to know that how this all is happening because um, they are also at the time of building the model we are going to make a convolution layer and then pooling and then fully connected layer all this we are going to make okay so let's get started so for this, uh, as you see here, usually I consider Google Colab. So this is our data set. Uh, so I have made this data set. Okay, modified this data set. So this is a training set and this is a test set. And one more thing you have to make. So uh, make a separate folder for prediction. Okay. Okay and uh, put some images put some images from google because in this folder i am going to take some images some extra images on which i am going to test our my model whether it is predicting the same or something different okay okay so this is our uh, so this is our image you can take image from Google also. I have I have also taken this same downloaded this image from Google. Okay, so this is the image. This is a daisy flower image. This is a, a rose and this is sunflower. This is tulip. This is also tulip. Both are tulip. Okay, why I am considering this because uh, here as you see that uh, this is tulip and this is also tulip, but it's something looking like rose yeah so that's why i am using this because i am going to test my model that whether it's predicting rose or it's tulip so i'm going to test the accuracy of my model 
that's why i am using something uh, similar to rows so that uh, we can determine that whether our model is predicting a good result or not that's why i am taking this image okay so these all are our prediction so later we will after building our model we will check on this okay so our data set is ready now we have to uh, make a new folder uh, one more thing here i am not using google collab because my data set is very large and it is approximate 228 mb data set so if i am going to use google collab then i have to upload this 228 mb file on google collab then perform uh, so it's a very difficult task so i'm going to use here jupyter notebook okay so let's create one folder so let's create one file so it's a flower recognition okay flower recognition dot ipynb okay so this is flower recognition.ipynb so my ipynb file is ready and wanna if you have not installed uh, jupyter uh, jupyter notebook then first of all install this anaconda okay from here let's type anaconda okay and after clicking this anaconda you will get this first link open this link so open this anaconda and go to this get started and download anaconda installer from here okay simply click this link and download the 64 bit graphical installer of 477 mb download this if you are using windows if you are using linux then in download this one this one and if you are using mac os then download from here okay so after downloading anaconda go to anaconda prompt something like this you will get from here so here like here anaconda 3 so here we will get anaconda prompt anaconda prompt okay so this is anaconda prompt so from here just pip install pip install tensorflow okay pip install tensorflow path press enter and install the tensorflow from here i have already installed the tensorflow so like this you can install the tensorflow because i am going to use your tensorflow in this project okay so then what you have to do open this anaconda and uh, after opening this you will get jupyter okay so install jupyter from here okay i'm not going to show you how to install because after opening anaconda you will get everything anaconda uh, jupyter and uh, spider orange there is many ids so you can install this jupyter okay and after installing jupyter notebook just open this jupyter notebook okay and now i am going to use the same directory in which i have already created so uh, my directory is in desktop and this is a flower recognition okay so this is so i've already created this prediction folder training set training set test set all this so this is my ipynb file so let's open this ipynb file okay not just on bar uh, recognition dot ip it's showing some error unreadable notebook okay something went wrong let's delete this okay uh sometimes there is a and uh, create the file from here okay okay just create the file from here now it's fine okay so here uh very let's comment out with uh, importing libraries 
importing libraries okay importing libraries and first you have to import import numpy as np uh, let's import it if needed then we will use this and second one is uh, import tensor flow as tf okay so second one is import tensor flow as tf and third one is import keras dot pre-processing i am going to use here because uh, i am going to perform some image processing so that's why so from keras dot pre-processing dot image i have to use and from this class i am going to import image data generator image data generator so this is a numpy this is tensorflow this is keras dot pre-processing dot image import image data generator okay so that's three library we have to use okay so our library is done and now what we have to do let's comment out with data pre-processing data pre-processing now this is a data pre-processing phase okay so in data pre-processing phase it's a uh, training training uh, image processing training image processing okay so this is a training image processing so here i am going to use uh, some uh, image data generator class so if you uh, if you guys uh, don't know about this then there is no problem you can go here keras api okay here in keras go to this link keras.io okay go here and search image processing image processing okay so here image data preprocessing and from here also you can get is no problem keras api ah so from here also ah huh? yeah so from keras api you can get this this is model api this is layers uh, from uh, to know about models of keras you can go through this link and for layers you can go from here you see as i explained in the theory that convolution layer pooling layer and this all are pre-processing layer these all base layer these all are some layers activation layer so at the time of building convolution layer uh, you can use this to build convolution layer pooling layer okay so here this is a data pre-processing okay so here uh, there's three type of data image data pre-processing text data pre-processing time series data pre-processing so here in this project i am going to use image data because uh, our task is related to image so let's open this image data pre-processing okay so here as you see some examples so um, we are using image data generator class okay we are using image data generator class so this is our example of flow from directory because our data set is already in directory and we have to only perform we have to only provide keras that directory that's why i have separately created here that's why i have separately created here training set test set and this training set contain all the categories uh, for folder containing its images so that's why i have done this okay so we have to use this this complete uh, line of code we have to use okay so if you don't know about uh, this and if uh, then there is no issue okay you don't have to memorize anything you can just go through this or api and read this api and just co copy this code from here okay but i'm um, i'm just giving you idea if you uh, if you are stuck in anywhere so you can use this api to find your error okay to solve your issue okay so i am going to define one variable train data train underscore data gen 
this is a train uh, this is a train data generator variable this is a data generator variable related uh, which is taking training data okay that's why train data gen create one object of that class image data generator and what you have to do uh, take one attribute rescale rescale and give it one div one point divided by 255 this is a scale we have to provide and second one is shear range shear underscore range uh, if you go here then uh, you will see that i am using the same this this rescale 1.25 and shear range 0.2 zoom range 0.2 horizontal flip true this same i am going to use so you can copy this from here because i am going to use the same thing okay so this is which we are going to use now we have to define our training set this is just a object which we are going to use in train to reprocess the training set okay so this is a training set so provide this object train data gen train underscore data gen this is one more method of that class flow from attribute uh, flow from directory directory this is flow from directory this is the object which we have created here da train data gen train data gen and then uh, provided this method of this class flow from directory and then flow from directory our first attribute is to provide the location of our training set so as you see here our this untitled and this ipynb file and training set are on the same directory so we have to just provide this training set so the, just write here training set training set and inside the training set there is many folder containing images related to each category so it will take automatically all this folder okay so you have to do nothing you have to just provide the location of your training set data and next what you have to do next you have to uh, target variable target size not variable target size what is this this is a uh, uh, this is our pre-processed image okay after doing all pre-processing we want that our image is in the form of 64 cross 64 pixel okay so that's why we have to provide this target target size so one more attribute you have to um, define this bash size which is 32 it will uh, it is a part of training so uh, in the form of 32 batches we are going to do this and one important attribute is class mode so class mode is basically two types one is binary and other is categorical so one more thing i want to explain here so here as you see that there is a if I'm going to open this training set, so there is one, two, three, four, five. So there is five category. So there is a category is more than two. So that's why here we have to use categorical. This is very important point. That's why here we have to use categorical. If there is only two, only two category in training set, something like cat or dog or uh, if you are going to predict whether it's man or woman okay if you are going to predict whether it's cat or dog it's you're going if you're going to predict uh, something uh, in two form something whether it is good or bad like this uh, whether it's a cat image whether it's a dog image whether it's man or woman if if there is only two category here the categories of flowers are five if you have only two category then you can use here binary binary stands for two okay so then you can use here binary but here my category is more than two 
that's why i am going to use categorical so this is very important if you are using here binary then you will uh, definitely come in trouble okay so let's run this uh, so our training set is done so our training set variable is defined so let's run this so here as you see uh, it's uh, popping here found 3155 images belonging to five classes so our keras library identified that training set contained five classes so that's the beauty of keras so now what you have to do same thing you have to do for test data gen okay you can uh, comment out here test image processing test image processing okay so same you have to do here test data gen you have to do you have to uh, define one more object test data generator and same class you have to define image data generator okay image data generator and here only you have to uh, define this attribute rescale one point one point uh, why one point because one point is float so we have to define here one point upon 255 okay this is a one by 255 but uh, one point stands for float number okay that's why one point so this is a test data gen which uh, contain image data generator okay so here we get test data gen here we are not going to define this shear range zoom range because we have already done this and in test data generator we only need this rescale okay we don't need that okay because it's only a part of training and this is a test testing data here we have to predict our results so there is no uh, here there's no need okay so let's define our test set okay so let's define variable test set and give here test same data gen test data gen dot flow from directory same you have to do flow from directory flow from directory and first attribute is uh, location okay so it's on same directory so simply pass test set okay and test it and then same you have to do you have to use this this target size and best size class mode you have to use all this okay so simply copy it from here and paste it here okay so test data gen also contain everything which contain in training set okay so sorry test set also contain the same thing which we have uh, which is in training set okay here also class mode is categorical best size is this and we want this image also in in the form of 64 cross 64 that's why this okay so let's run this oh test data gen is not defined test data gen it's not defined uh something we have done wrong test oh here 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 test data then okay now we get the here found so here also keras identified that it is five class images now keras also identified that this test set is also contained five class images okay so keras is doing well now what we have to do our processing our processing is done okay now we are going to jump on building model okay so this is the important part of convolution neural network okay so let's define one variable cnn okay so this is a convolution neural network variable this is our model okay you can give your model also same thing so from model so here from tf tensorflow dot keras dot models from tensorflow.keras.models we are going to use the sequential class which is going to define our model okay this this sequential class tensorflow.keras.models.sequential will going to 
define the structure of our convolution neural network okay so this is our convolution neural network okay so our first step is done okay so our convolution neural network is defined this is very important now what we have to do as i have already explained here that after making your convolution neural network first layer what is first layer first layer is this convolution layer okay so here you have to make your convolution layer so here let's type building convolution layer okay building convolution layer so what you have to do let's type here cnn.add you have to use cnn.add so we have to add layer so take here tf.keras same tf.keras dot layers you have to use tf from tensorflow dot keras you have to use layers and from layers you have to use this convolution layer so use conv2d okay so this is convolution layer okay so from tensorflow.keras.layer you have to use convolution layer okay and in convolution layer your first argument is filter because here also as you see this is a filter which which is going to filter the image and put it in the separate matrix okay so that's why i am going to use here filter so what we want in filter suppose here as you see it is a three cross three matrix so here filter is equal to three okay so here our filter is of 64 okay so take it filter here 64 and kernel size you have to give kernel size is also one more uh, attribute kernel size is you can give here three also and this is activation function what is activation function activation function is that function which is going to perform some computation at the time of doing this here at the time of doing this something is going on here so this is uh, the job of your activation function okay so that's why here we have to use activation function value and there is many activation function like uh, if you go here if you go here then uh, in keras api you can check your activation function from here uh, in layers you will get it okay in layers so here see relu sigmoid soft max soft plus soft sine tan s lu lu exponential these all are uh, activation function but uh, mainly we use relu okay because relu is uh, used everywhere and it's where uh, accuracy is good okay so here cnn dot add you have to add tensorflow dot keras dot layers dot this is a convolution layer that's why we are going to use this okay and we have used first filter of 64 of size 64 and kernel size is 3 kernel size you can take 2 1 2 3 anything uh, why i am using this because i have uh, I have already tested this model and I am getting a good result on using this number. That's why I am choosing here 64 and I am choosing here 3. Okay. Okay. So that's why I am choosing here kernel size 3 and activation function mainly we are going to use ReLU. Okay. So our activation function is done. Now we are going to give a input size because uh, in convolution layer uh, this is the first layer of convolution neural network so we have to provide here input shape not size input shape of the image because um, uh, we have to uh, tell convolution neural network that input uh, input images is of size 64 cross 64 why 64 cross 64 because here i have already defined this target size as 64 so after uh, image processing, after training and testing uh, set, when training and test set get pre-processed, then we get our image size as 64 plus 64. That's why I am going to use here that hey convolution neural network, uh, you will get everything images uh, of size 64 plus 64. Okay, 
so that's why i i have provided here 64 cross 64 okay and this three represent that it is a rgb image okay that's why i have used here three okay so first one is filter first attribute is filter which is 64 this is kernel size and this is activation function which is doing some computation in convolution neural network okay in convolution layer of convolution neural network okay so uh, and uh, uh, this input shape uh, attribute is only uh, we we will go we will give in first layer only because on the first layer um, when our image is entered then in next layer there is no need to give an input shape so this is done now what we have to do uh, take it here cnn.add once more because uh, after convolution layer as you see in theory after convolution layer we are going to get um, we are going to give a pooling layer okay so that's why you have to perform one more layer same step tf dot keras dot layers dot here i am going to use max pool as you see in theory that uh, there is two type of pooling max pool and average pool so here i am going to use max pool 2d okay max pool 2d okay 2d stands for two dimensional matrix okay that's why max pool 2d and here pool size pool size is 2 okay and strides as i explained you what is strides stride is basically a jump of that uh, filter okay of that uh, yeah filter so here this is this is 2 cross 2 i have taken okay so this and uh, the size of this matrix is 2 cross 2 and the jump is of 2 okay so that's why i have taken here pool size of 2 and strides of 2 that jump two times okay twice okay so this is our first layer this is first convolution layer in which i am going to take in and give a input image at the first time only and then uh, here second one is pool max pool pooling layer okay so it's done okay so let's run it so it's done uh, and one more thing to make your model more accurate uh, at least two times perform this okay at least give two layer okay to speed up your model because sometimes some important features are missing at the first time so it will get in second layer also so that's why give at least two layer so that at the first time when input image will extract some feature and perform this and then at second time also it will extract some important feature and it will filter out this so after two filtration it will uh, uh, your model will predict a good result okay um, but here in second time you you have you don't have to perform um, provide this input shape because you have already provided this input shape input image at the first time and next time what's happening next time this convolution neural network which is performing this the output of this one is going to uh, is going in this layer okay so that's why there is no need to perform uh, to provide this here input shape okay so output of this one this matrix after this we get some matrix so this matrix is going here and it's also doing some filtration and performing some computation and then also uh, next one is pooling so here also max pooling is performed then new matrix is generated okay so this is done okay now what we have to do uh, you can provide here some dropout what dropout will do dropout will uh, optimize your process and you will get a good result that's why this parameter is helpful so perform one more here dropout drop out this is mainly used when uh, sometimes if your model is not giving a good result then you can improve your model accuracy by providing this okay so that's why it uh, add this this is also added in convolution this is also one type of layer added in convolution neural network okay just like here this is a first layer convolution this is pooling and second one is uh, third one is dropout which is added here okay so we are adding these layer in the form of python code okay our libraries are doing everything 
only we are providing the code okay so dropout is added what we have to do now so as you as i explained to you that after convolution max pool there is one process called flattening which will flatten your m cross m matrix in m cross one form okay so here to perform flattening same you have to do cnn dot add and here perform tf dot keras dot flatten tf dot keras dot layers dot same layers dot flatten okay and one more thing you have seen here that after layers every classes are of capital letters c m here here drop out and here flatten so observe this okay so flattening is done no parameter you have to pass here okay because i am going to just uh, i am going to do just flattening our convolution layer okay our uh, our matrix which is uh, which is we get which we get from after performing convolution and max pool okay so flattening is done okay so now what you have to do a uh, last step is now we you have to construct a artificial neural network because after doing this flattening what is going on you have to you have to make one hidden layer and one output layer okay so that's why now we have to make here hidden layer okay so to make hidden layer just add here same cnn dot add tf dot keras dot layers tf dot keras dot layers dot dense you have to use in for uh, for hidden layer you have to use dense okay dense stands for something which is inside okay so that's why uh, you are going to use dense and here you have to provide one parameter units why you what, what is units unit is the number of hidden layer you want okay so here i want 128 okay 128 hidden layer i want now uh, 120 what is 128 this is something here as you see here one two three four so here unit is equal to four okay because here only four four neurons okay four neurons in one hidden layer so i am going to uh, i am going to provide 128 neuron in my hidden layer okay now after hidden layer you have to perform uh, provide this activation function also because activation function is going to do some computation in hidden layer and adjust your um, adjust some parameter and um, it set uh, your parameter with uh, with your output value so that your model will pred predict a good result so all the computation are going to be done with the help of activation function okay so our activation function uh, so our first hidden layer is done uh, next what you have to do uh, we uh, in this uh, i am going to provide only one hidden layer you can provide also multiple also but as i have already tested this model with multiple hidden layer and i am good, getting a bad result so provide only a, because sometimes overfitting occurs so provide only one hidden layer and now what you have to do our hidden layer is done as you see in this uh, diagram after hidden layer there is output layer okay so now we have to construct output layer so for output layer same you have to use dot dense you have to use okay and in output layer you have to provide units is equal to so one more thing here as you see here our categories are one two three four five there is five category okay so five categories so we have to provide here five because we want five types our model will give output in the form of zero or one if your uh, image is of daisy then daisy category will be one okay and rest all categories will be zero okay if your categories uh, if your image is of rows then rows category will be one and rest of will be zero that's why we have to provide one two three four five categories suppose your model has only two categories okay only two categories then you have to only provide here units is equal to one not two why one because 
if you uh, if uh, suppose uh, here if you have only rose and sunflower as category okay and you have provided in the output layer only one input so if your input is uh, if your output layer is one then you will get rose if it is zero then you will get sunflower so uh, for two binary data you, you uh, it's um, you can provide here one okay but if your data is more than that more than two then you have to provide the same number of category number of uh, output uh, neuron will be same as the number of category okay so units uh, units are done now what you have to the same activation function you have to provide here so activation is equal to so here activate uh, one more thing here if you are going to use uh, if 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 you are going to use binary category okay then you are uh, dealing with only one okay zero or one okay if there is binary category then you will get either zero or one if there is zero then it's cat if there is one then it's dog okay so there uh, you can use activation function as sigmoid okay so sigmoid function you can use in that type of category where there is only binary category because the slope of sigmoid function if you see in the graph of sigmoid function then it's like in uh, it ranges in the zero or one so at that time at this at that situation you can use sigmoid function but here here as you see the category is more than two so that's why i am going to use here soft max function okay and uh, one more thing if you are stuck anywhere then you can run your uh, result and check its accuracy then you then you will definitely get the result and you will identify that which one which activation function is giving a good result mainly at in the binary category where your category is, is two then you can use sigmoid function but here my category is more than two then i am using softmax function and in rest of uh, uh, everywhere in any every layer we i am going i am using relu same in binary also i will use relu okay only only thing is that in output layer my activation function is going to be changed okay so this is sig softmax okay so this is done activation function is done so my output layer is created and now what we have to do so as you see in the diagram convolution is done flattening is done and hidden layer is generated and output is done okay so everything is done now what you have to do our network is ready convolution neural network is ready now we have to compile our result so to compile our result we provide one more thing first argument you have to provide optimizer optimizer is basically like a compiler okay so here you have to provide an optimizer in this okay so go to just keras api and check optimizers there are many optimizer if you go here so here, as you see here there are sgd rms prop adam ada delta ada grade ada max there are many optimizer but i have already tested with every optimizer and I am getting a good result. I am getting the best result in this RMS prop. Okay. So here I am going to use RMS prop. Generally it's, it's seen that in binary classification problem where classification is in the form of zero or one, this optimizer, this ADAM optimizer is best suitable. But in categorical categorical classification problem, RMS prop is giving you a good result. Okay. But uh, if you if you are stuck and um, anywhere, then you can use all optimizer by simply going from here and checking it, and you can use your optimizer. So first one is optimizer RMS prop is done, and second one is loss. Okay. So in loss, you have to provide categorical, you have to provide here, categorical cross entropy. Yeah. Categorical underscore cross entropy. And one more thing. If you are uh, dealing with binary classification problem, then you have to provide here binary cross entropy. 
ओके सो ऑल कैटेगोरिकल हियर इज रिप्लेस बाय बाइनरी जस्ट लाइक हियर आल्सो कैटेगोरिकल विल रिप्लेस बाय बाइनरी ओके सो ऑल कैटेगोरिकल विल रिप्लेस बाय बाइनरी सो हियर आवर प्रॉब्लम इज मोर देन टू क्लासिफिकेशन प्रॉब्लम सो हियर वी आर गोइंग टू यूज कैटेगोरिकल क्रॉस एंड ट्रॉपी ओके सो दिस इज डन एंड लास्ट वन इज मैट्रिक्स is equal to we have to define this parameter to check the accuracy of our result matrix is equal to accuracy okay so provide this matrix is equal to accuracy it will give our it will give a accuracy of our model okay that's why i am defining this so cnn dot compile contain first argument as optimizer which is basically optimizer uh, at during the compilation process and loss is categorical cross entropy we have to provide if your data is uh, if your data set is uh, if your problem is related to two classification problem then provide here binary cross entropy if there is more than two then uh, provide here categorical cross entropy and matrix is accuracy okay so this is done run this now the last step what you have to do cnn dot fit you have to perform cnn dot fit and take x as a argument and provide here training set okay x as argument and provide here training set and second argument is validation data validation data this is same for all models okay this uh, this is predefined name okay you have to provide here first argument as x and second argument as validation data and define its value also so our uh, x contain value as training set which i have defined here and this validation data we have to provide here test set okay test set this small x and this validation data is same okay will be same for every every model okay so the value of x will be training set and value of validation data will be test set okay and now the important things is apox what is apox apox i am going to provide here 30 apox is like a cycle in that process of tra in training the model okay it's like 30 loop which is going to be performed during the training process and if you are getting uh, sometimes uh, some students are confused that uh, what is the value of and um, what is the most precise value of apoc on on which we we will get a good result because sometimes as seen that uh, uh, if your apoc value is more high then you are getting good result if your apoc value is low then you are getting bad result sometimes students are confused with this but i am going to tell you one one important trick that if uh, uh, see your training process okay see your training process history and if your accuracy is increasing with apox okay uh, like uh, at 10 apox your accuracy is 65% and at 20 apox your accuracy is uh, um 70% and um, and at 29 apox your accuracy is 75% okay 76 77% so as you see here accuracy is improve your accuracy is improving simultaneously so it's good to use uh, more than 30 apox okay but if you see that your accuracy is not improving it's static or somewhat decreasing or improving with very less num value then don't use more apox because apox will also um increase the training time because 30 times it will execute okay 30 times your data will be trained okay number of apox uh, the number of apox which we have defined that number of times your data will be trained so that's why um, don't use more apox if your um, if your model accuracy is not increasing okay so uh, make sure all these points okay so let's run this and see what's happening it will take approx 5 to 10 minutes to train the model then only we are able to uh, do some prediction okay so let's see
okay so uh, um, let's uh, this process is running so we we are going to do some more steps um, until this process is running okay so here uh, first of all uh, as you see in the first epoch after 78 79 uh, 80% of the process we get accuracy of 0.4 approx 40% okay so it's going on so let's see after first epoch what we are getting so after first step uh, so after first step up we are getting approx 47 percent accuracy okay after first step up we are getting 47 percent of accuracy okay let's uh, do some more things until it's running okay so our training is going on so before this we have to perform some more things uh, because uh, after training what we are going to do so after training we have to um, uh, deal with how we are going to check so we will take this one we will take this prediction image this these all image and on this image we are going to test our model that whether our model is predicting the same if this is an image of rose then uh, our model will also have to predict that it's a rose whether our model is predicting that it's a rose or not so we have to check this so for that first of all we have to uh, pre-process that image which we which we are going to provide from the here from here so we have to pre-process this image and make it in the form of uh, make it in the form of that so that it pass to uh, pass through this layer and uh, our model will predict the good result so we have to pre-process that input image okay so for that we have to import first of all let comment out here pre-process Reprocess new image. Okay, comment out with this. Reprocess new image, and let's import one library, new library from Keras dot processing. Sorry, from Keras dot preprocessing. From Keras dot preprocessing, we have to import image from keras dot preprocessing we have to import image and this is our test image okay so let's define one variable test image is equal to test image is equal to image dot image dot this image this image class we have to use image dot load img we, we have to use load img okay image dot load img and provide the location of that image okay so location is prediction slash that image which we have to provide here so uh, i am going to do my first prediction on this uh, daisy.jpg okay so let's provide here daisy make sure the spelling is correct d a i d a i s y okay daisy.jpg okay so daisy.jpg and target size is same because we have to pass it to our convolution neural network so target size will be same 64 cross 64 because our convolution neural network will accept only 64 cross 64 pixel image okay so that's why target size we have to give here 64 cross 64 okay so this is done now let's define again test image test image is equal to image dot now what we have to do so we have to convert this image in the form of matrix okay in the form of array okay two dimensional array because uh, as you see in this diagram your image is converted in the form of array 
then all this flattening convolution neural network cooling and flattening all this stuff are happening okay so you have to convert this in the form of array because uh, currently it is just a, a image of 64 plus 64 but now we want to convert it in the form of array so to convert it in the array you have to use the uh, class of the class of image not class the method of image img to array okay so this is uh, from image from keras dot tree processing dot image you have to uh, use one feature img to array okay and pass that test image okay simple pass that test image okay so now here your image is converted in array in the form of array okay but one more thing you have to expand its dimension so that it's same as your it's same to accept in convolution neural network so you have to expand its dimension okay so to expand its dimension you have to use here np dot expand np dot expand underscore dimension dims okay and pass here test image and one more thing have to flatten this so that's why I use here x is equal to one zero okay so use here x is equal to zero okay so your flattening is also done expand dimension test image x is equal to zero is done now what you have to do may define one variable result and here you have to pass cnn dot predict because now we have rescaled this image we have uh, converted this image in the form of array and we have also expanded its dimension so now this image is ready to go in neural network okay so now let's pass this image uh, as test image in convolution neural network and after this code cnn dot predict our convolution neural network will predict in which category this image is lying okay so our training is done so here as you see that here we got our training accuracy of 72 percent okay so this is our training process completely so after 30 epochs we get our accuracy of 72 percent okay so uh, after training uh, after training the model now we are ready to do some prediction okay so we have defined here from keras dot tree processing import image we have done and we have defined here one variable test image and in test image we have loaded the image from that location with size as 64 cross 64 because our network will accept only 64 cross 64 pixel okay that's why we have taken here this target size value as 64 64 and next what we have done so after rescaling our image we have to convert this image in the form of matrix so we have used this feature image.img to array and pass this test image okay and now we have expanded its dimension and then our image is ready to pass in convolution neural network so we have passed this in the neural network and do the prediction and store the result in result store the result in result variable okay so now i am going to show you what is the value what is the meaning of this one okay so let's uh, cut this and okay so here let's paste this what is this mean? test image okay so i have provided here dash you have to provide here underscore okay so run this so it is run successfully so now I'm going to show you the, uh, the use of this, why we, why I'm going to use this. So this will, uh, so here as you see that, so it's showing that uh, daisy consists of value as zero and dandelion consists of value as one and rose consists of value as two and sunflower consists of value as three. Okay. This is basically index okay because i have all uh, here taken training set dot class indices so this is the zero tin index 
सो जीरो इंडेक्स ऑफ रिजल्ट कंटेन डेजी एंड वन इंडेक्स कंटेन डेंडेलियन टू इंडेक्स कंटेन रोज थ्री इंडेक्स कंटेन सनफ्लावर फोर्थ इंडेक्स कंटेन ट्यूलिप ओके सो हियर ऑन द बेसिस ऑफ दिस वी हैव टू डू प्रोडिक्शन ओके सो रिजल्ट इज बेसिकली टू क्रॉस टू मैट्रिक्स ओके इफ आई एम गोइंग टू प्रिंट हियर रिजल्ट लेट सी वॉट्स गोइंग ऑन प्रिंट रिजल्ट so as you see here we got this uh, 2d matrix with uh, this 1 0 0 0 okay so this zeroth index is uh, located for daisy and first index is for dandelion second index is for rose third index is for sunflower fourth index is for tulip okay so our model is predicting that it's a daisy okay as you see that daisy is one and rest of all is zero okay and we have passed here daisy image so we are getting a good result we are getting the same result as daisy okay so to get the uh, to get more accurate and more uh, correct result you have to do some things here use this if a statement if result result if result zeroth index and this also zeroth index if result 0 0 is 1 okay let's see the logic print that it said daisy okay so if result 0 0 value it means if the zero means this uh, we access this list okay and next zero means this one okay so if zero zero value is one that is this then if it's uh, if the result zero zero value is one then say that it's a daisy okay because it is located for daisy okay a leaf a leaf result A leaf result zero and one. If first index is one, then print that it's a dandelion. Okay, dandelion and a leaf result zero comma two. If second index is one of two D list is one, then say that it's a rose. Okay, then say that it's a rose, a leaf result zero and now third index is uh, if it's one, then say that. it's a sunflower a leaf result 0 and uh, result 4 fourth. fourth index is 1 fourth one is 1 so we say that it's a you leave okay so our task is done okay now let's see what's going on uh there is some oh one double equal to single equal to multiple so everything is fine let's see so as you see here i am getting daisy okay so here i have passed the image of daisy okay let's take some more different image uh let's go to here prediction let's take this r image this is basically image of rose okay so let's change this location and put it here r r dot jpg run this file so here as you see that i am getting rose so our model is predicting good result okay 
सो लेट्स नाउ चेक ऑन सनफ्लावर दिस सनफ्लावर ओके सो पुट इट हियर एस ओके सो आई एम गेटिंग सनफ्लावर गुड एंड लेट्स पुट हियर ट्यू आ दिस इज बेसिकली ट्यूलिप ट्यू डॉट जे पी जी ओके लेट्स चेंज यू टी यू टी यू so i am getting here tulip okay great now it's a challenging one because this one is looking like a rose something like a rose but not a rose it's a tulip okay so now our model will let's see what our model is predicting so this is tulip this is tulip.jpg okay so let's see tulip.jpg okay let's run it Oh great! So our model is predicting again a tulip. Okay, again it's predicting tulip. So our model is uh, passed in its test. So it's uh, it's looking like rose, but our model is still predicting that it's a tulip. Okay. So our task is done. So as you see here, everything is fine. So this is a small deep learning project based on convolution neural network. in which i am uh, in which our model is predicting a whether it's a uh, which uh, which is a, what is the image of that flower whether it's rose dandelion or daisy or tulip what is that okay so this is a image recognition project okay so let's summarize it so what i have done first of all let's see the last one we have missed it so this is the last one so let's summarize it okay so first of all what why uh, what i have done i have imported the libraries then next one numpy tensorflow stf keras.preprocessing.image image image data generator why image data generator because uh, i am using this to uh, pre process my training set and test set okay so now this is the data pre processing phase so in first first one is training image processing okay so first of all i have uh, define an object of image data generator as train data gen and put some attribute as rescale 1.1 point of divided by 2.5 cr range this zoom range 0.2 this one and horizontal flip is true if you are confused with this attribute and you don't have idea that how the, all this stuff is happening then you, uh, you then i recommend you to check out keras documentation where i have just showed you on the in these uh, attributes and if you are stuck anywhere then you can just go go there and copy that okay so this is the code so you have to use okay to define this image data generator okay then what you have to do after defining this image data generator class you have to define training set and in training set you have to take one more method this flow from directory from there pass first argument as the location of that training set and second argument as the target size which you want to give to the, your convolution neural network here i have chosen 64 plus 64 okay you can choose 128 also then further anywhere you have to choose that one because your target size is changed to 128 okay so here i have choose 64 plus 64 and batch size is 32 32 batches i want and class mode i have choose chosen here categorical why categorical because my categories is more than 2 that's why i have chosen here categorical if my categories is 2 then i then i am i am going to uh, take here binary but my categories is more than 2 that's why i have chosen here categorical okay so after running this i got that found 3155 images belonging to five classes okay so my training uh, processing is done training set processing is done now let's move to test image processing so here the same i have defined here no need to define shear range zoom range horizontal flip here only rescaling is required in test testing test set okay so in test set same same logic you have to use here simply test data gen flow from directory pass first argument as test set location target size of test set is also of 64 plus 64 and batch size will be 32 and class mode is still categorical okay because 
test set has also five categories okay more than two okay that's why you get categorical building model so now data pre-processing is done and next phase is building model okay so first of all i have defined this variable cnn which is our convolution neural network and define this sequential layer okay this is the structure of our convolution neural network that's why i have used here tensorflow.keras.models.sequential okay so our model is defined it means uh, you can say that like a skeleton of our uh, model is defined okay now we are going to uh, add the functionality in that model okay so add first layer which is convolution layer so to add convolution layer use this code cnn.add and in convolution layer we have to pass tf.keras.con2d con2d means convolution layer so that's why i've used here con2d there is many convolution layer con2d con4d many but here i am using two dimensional matrix that's why con2d and filters i am using 64 filters and kernel i am using three kernels and in that layer i am using a relu function value activation function okay because it's a first layer that's why i need to pass this input shape as this because in first layer i am going to pass my image so we have to define the size of that image so that's why i have passed here 64 64 and this 3 represent that it's a rgb image okay that's why we have written here 3 okay now our convolution layer is defined now next one is this max pool layer uh, we can use here average pool also but here i am considering max pool so simply just add cnn.add and add it tf.keras.layers.maxpool2d and the pool size of that is 2 and strides the moment the jump is 2 2 steps okay so it's a 2 cross 2 uh, layer 2 cross 2 matrix and with strides as 2 which is going to filter out this uh, this is the mat uh, this is the matrix which is uh, which is coming from this convolution layer is filtered by this 2 cross 2 matrix okay using max pool okay process so this is done and after this the new matrix which we will get is again going in again another convolution layer and then another max pool layer to extract the only important feature not the irrelevant feature okay so that's why i have uh, defined again this one okay so that if there is any uh, irrelevant feature that one will be discarded okay that's why uh, i've used it two times this okay so that we get the good result then what we have to do our convolution layer and max pooling is done then sometimes there is some issue uh, related to accuracy and our model is not going to give a good result so use this dropout feature cnn.add.tf.keras.layers.dropout it's optional feature you can uh, discard also but uh, i am using here it's an optional so to add dropout it will sometimes it improve the accuracy of our model okay that's why i have used here so dropout is 0.5 is done next what we have to do so our max pooling is done convolution is done max pooling is done now we have to flatten this matrix in a single matrix okay in a form of uh, in a column matrix you can say that in a form of column matrix okay so add this cnn dot add to convert this in the form of column matrix use this tf dot keras dot layer dot flatten feature okay it will flatten the your matrix okay so that it it is ready to pass in artificial neural network so our input layer is generated artificial this is a, this act as a input layer of artificial neural networks okay input layer of artificial neural network is generated now what we have to do pass this in hidden layer so we have to convert uh, we have to make one hidden layer also so add one hidden layer also of neuron size of 128 numbers okay with activation function in each hidden layer of relu activation function because hidden layer uh, have to compute some uh, uh, have to do some computation so that it forms some relation and it uh, modifies your input parameter and on the basis of that it 
uh, it uh, identifies some relation and after that our model is ready to do some prediction okay so that's why it's important to define the activation function because activation function is going to do everything so here in hidden layer i am going to give a same activation function which i have provided in convolution layer okay same relu okay so our hidden layer is ready now what we have what we have done we have uh, added one more layer which is output layer on on that we are going to get our output okay so add the layer cnn dot add tf dot keras dot layers dot dense this is also a dense hidden layer and output layer are uh, de defined using dense okay so here i am going to give a five five neuron in output layer why five because my categories is more than two so that's why if categories is more than two then number of categories is equal to number of units in the output layer okay so that's why i have given here five if my categories is binary that is two then i will give and uh, then i will give here and there two one not two because uh if i am going to give one uh, that then that output node will be either zero or one okay so one is okay but here our uh, our categories is more than two that's why we have to provide here input units is equal to five and activation i am go going to give here softmax if it's binary binary category that is two category then you can provide here sigmoid okay because sigmoid works where there is only two category in the form of zero or one but here the categories is more than two that's why i provided here soft max and also you can say that uh, i'm not getting a good result on in sigmoid that's why also i have taken here soft max okay so you can take either sigmoid or soft max but here i am getting a good result on soft max okay so output layer is ready now what i have done I've compiled this. Uh, I've compiled this using optimizer as RMS prop and loss as categorical cross entropy. Okay. Define this category uh, loss is equal to categorical cross entropy and matrix is equal to accuracy. If your uh, problem is binary, that is two category two categories problem, then use here binary cross entropy. Change this categorical with binary okay if your problem is of two if you are going to do some prediction or categorizing anything in two form in two categories okay not more than two then change this categorical with binary okay if your problem is more than two then stay with categorical okay stay here also with categorical here also with categorical okay so this is done now what I have done, fit. I have I have performed the training process. Okay, so this is CNN dot fit x x parameter I have passed training set and in validation data I have passed test set and epoch I have taken thirty cycle. I want that in thirty cycle uh, of uh, performed some uh, thirty cycle. Okay, I want thirty cycles. Okay. So after 30 cycle, I got 72% of accuracy. Okay. So this is my 72% of accuracy. And after that, this all code is for test image. Okay. Pre-process the test image. Okay. So from keras.preprocess, I have imported the image and taken the test image and loaded the test image using this location and target size. I have taken the same as uh, I have set the convention for convolution neural network. Okay, before in here, and this is uh, the code to convert this in the array form, and this is to expand its dimension. And then I have done prediction, pass this test image in C convolution neural network. It will predict and give the result in the result variable, and then this code training set dot class indices i have done to check the classes to check the each classes of 
because our result variable is a uh, two dimensional matrix so we have to find out that which one is of which class okay uh, whether it's a value of daisy whether it's a value of on rose which one is of which category okay so to find out the categories find out the value of each category that's why i have used in this so that we i got that uh, zeroth index is for daisy one index is located for dandelion two index is located for rose three index located for sunflower and fourth index one is located for tulip so that's what i identified the location of each categories and so here from by using this logic get this as tulip okay so i have passed this tulip image and i am getting tulip so our model is predicting a 100 percent accurate result sometimes uh, because the accuracy of our model is 72 so sometimes we got a, uh, not a good result but maximum in maximum cases we will get a good result so this is a small project hope uh, you guys like this project you like this project and if you guys are getting a good result in uh, changing some parameters like here from uh, like changing some units of this dense uh, this hidden layer or by changing some filters then post in the comment box and if you guys are facing any doubt related to deep learning or machine learning related stuff then post in the comment box i will try to resolve your issue and the link of this code i will provide in the description and also the data set and one more thing i want to tell you that before getting started to this project when you download this data set then you will get something different you have to manually you have to manually you will get this one okay you have to manually split this data set into this form okay training set and test set as you see here i am just passing this folder okay i am not passing each location of each flowers location okay I'm just passing this training set folder here also and here also and our our Keras and TensorFlow are doing everything okay so that's why make sure that you have separate folder for training set and test set to execute your result in the form as I have done here so that's all for this thanks a lot thank you guys for watching this video